presentation contains current opinions of Moe Sansari, Chief Investment Officer of Compact Asset Management, a registered investment advisor, and are subject to change. Nothing in this presentation should be considered investment advice. We make no assurance that Moe's opinions or illustrations will accurately predict future prices or financial markets. In no event is past performance a guarantee of future performance. A detailed disclosure can be found at the end of the presentation. And now here's Mo. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Compaq Asset Management Market Wrap YouTube update for January 29, 2021. I'm Mo Ansari, President of Compaq Asset Management and host of Market Wrap. Don't forget, you can get the daily edition of Market Wrap every day directly on your smartphone. All you have to do is download the app. Go to the App Store and type in Market Wrap with Mo Ansari. You'll see the app, download it, it's free, and you'll get the update every day, one hour radio broadcast, all the great guests, all of my views, all of what I'm thinking about the markets on a daily basis directly on your smartphone. Also, don't forget, be sure to subscribe to this channel, click on the bell to get notified whenever I put up a, an update on this YouTube channel. So all you have to do is subscribe, make sure you click on the bell. Let's start with the markets. I'm, it's, the, it's the battle between the virus and the vaccine. That's the pandemic. We'll talk about that. What's going on with the U.S. markets? Worst week in, since uh, the end of October in the markets. What happened this week? We had key reversals. What are those? Well, I'll explain when we take a look at the charts when I do the technical analysis. But let's start with the pandemic and what's going on with that right now. This was two weeks ago in the middle of January. We were seeing this, uh, uh, the infections going straight up and we saw the death rate going straight up. That's what we were seeing. It, it was just, and that was expected. After Christmas, we, we were expecting a surge. We got the surge. Now, this is the good news. We're starting to see the infection rate starting to come down, and we've sort of stabilized in the death rate. So as you know, the mortalities follow uh, the infections. We get the infections and the hospitalizations and then the mortalities. So it's a little lag. I think with this, uh, the, the infection rates coming down, the mortality rates are also going to come down. So we're starting to turn the corner, but we're doing it very slowly. That's what we are starting to see. You can see that uh, in all the regions, this was the Midwest, uh, they, they had been coming down all along. The West was the one that had the problem, went high, came back down, hit a new high, but now all regions are headed lower, which is a good sign as far as the pandemic is concerned. Now we got to get the vaccines out to everybody. We are, we've got about, I think, about 25 million uh, people uh, vaccinated so far. We have the, uh, the, uh, the Pfizer, the BioNTech, and the Moderna. We've got about 13 and a half peop million people uh, vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccine. We've got about 11 million. So we've got about 26 million people, plus or minus, already. Uh, 25, 26 million people that have been vaccinated. So that is a good sign. Today we had more good news. Johnson Johnson came out uh, that they have a one-shot uh, vaccine coming out, will not require two shots. Sometime by the, they'll apply to the FDA for emergency use authorization by the end of next week, probably by the middle of February to the third week of February, we should start getting that. They said they might have 100 million doses by the end of March. Novavax also came out. They had a higher efficacy rate of about 86%. Johnson Johnson was only about 66%. But on the variant that is here in the United States and Britain, it was 85, 86%. It's the South African variant that was down to about 47, 49%. That's how much uh, immunity it gave you against the South African variant. So those are the problems we are going to see as, the, as this virus mutates. We might have to get a booster shot, some of those, but most of the uh, vaccines uh, with even in Johnson Johnson, no people who had the vaccine were hospitalized or died after they had the vaccine, even if they got the virus. So with that, that's great news. More people who get vaccinated the earlier. We got to get the vac vaccinations in people's arms. The earlier we get them, the earlier we can open the economy. Earlier we can open the economy, the earlier we can get the stock market going again. This is the, the death rate. Again, uh, mortality is way down except in the 65 plus. That's where we see the mortality rates at about 6.29%, which is very, 2.69%, which is very high. But most of the infections are between the 40, 18, and 49-year-olds. They had the most people infected. 
people. When you look at the mortality rate from the infection is 0.032, so it's very low. It, it's, it's 65 plus that we have to really worry about, and now most of these people are getting vaccinated, and as these people get vaccinated, the rates are gonna come down and we're gonna start reopening. You look at the vaccines across America, the darker, the better our job they're doing, more people are vaccinated. Uh, the lighter is about somewhere around eight to 9%, seven to 8% as I think where most of the people is, are, most of the states are. There's a couple of states that have done real well with the vaccinations, but most are there. This is the path to immunity. Two weeks ago, we were seeing somewhere around, uh, we, we've gotta to get to about 35% of the people have got it. But you can see that uh, this is uh, the infection rate in blue. Uh, the gray is uh, the CDC estimated additional U.S. infections. And the green is uh, uh, the doses, the vaccine. You can see that it's gradually starting to get higher. But we go two weeks out. As of, uh, you can see that green is definitely starting to, uh, to look better. And that is starting to increase as we increase the vaccinations closer and we closer we get to herd immunity. Talking about, so that's where we are is the vaccine and the virus. Uh, that's uh, the earlier, the more vaccine. Now, the South African variant is something to be concerned about. It's not prevalent here. They say it is spreading. They found two cases yesterday in South Carolina. Uh, but again, uh, as, as long as you get vaccinated, the chances of getting this is, uh, or having a bad outcome if you do get the uh, COVID, it, it, it is not that high. So the earlier we can get more people, the, the, the shots in the arms, as they call it, and it will be a shot in the arm for the economy as soon as we get everybody vaccinated, if I can put it that way. Let's talk about the U.S. markets. Uh, stimulus, I think the markets are getting a little bit worried about the stimulus package. $1.9 trillion, $1 trillion was uh, the one proposed by President Biden. $1 trillion is direct, direct relief. 400 billion coronavirus vaccination, 350 billion in state and local aid. The problem is, uh, now the Democrats are trying to work with the Republicans to increase to get this 1.9 trillion dollar package done. But time is of the essence. I think President Biden will have to make a decision in the next few days. Either he's going to go along and make some changes to this plan that will be acceptable to the Republicans, and then we will have bipartisan. If the Republicans are just delaying and don't want to get anything done, then the President Biden has the power, just because he has the Senate with 51 votes with budget reconciliation process to pass the $1.9 trillion. That's what the market is waiting for. I think that's why the market was down a little bit. It's waiting for that new uh, shot in the arm. That's go it's what's going to be for the market, for the economy, at $1.9 trillion. People saying that's too much and all of that. Well, we don't know what is too much but we know what is too little. Every time we get, as I showed you in the last webinar that I did, that whenever we get a stimulus package, the market and the economy picks up. Uh, we did have some interesting news this week with uh, GameStop and, and uh, some of the other AMC. Those are the two uh, stocks that just took off. Uh, there's this uh, board out there that is called uh, Reddit, and then it has a uh, uh, somebody who calls himself Roaring Kitty or whatever else he's called, his, his name is, and he's a day trader and a YouTube streamer, and they did research and they found these people, with these stocks that uh, were about or just going down, down, and down. Uh, GameStop sells video games in a mall that you go and buy the video game. I don't know how many kids go into the mall and buy a video game. Now they just, you can automatically download it. So the stock was coming down. It was down to about $10, $15 a share. Uh, the hedge funds knew this was a company that will go bankrupt, so they were just selling it short. Somebody said, look at all these short positions. That's what Roaring Kitty and this whole, uh, uh, everybody figured out. They said, if we start buying this, the Reddit board, all of these people said, let's buy the stock. So they buy it. Now all the hedge funds that are short have to buy those positions back. They buy it. The market goes up, the hedge funds lose, they have to buy the stock back, they start buying, higher it goes, so on and so forth. It went to $500 a share, uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, Robin's, uh, Robinhood, which is where most of these accounts are, these are small traders, uh, people who started trade for the first time, said, oh, by the way, our largest customer are the hedge funds. So no more trading for the small customers. You're, you can't trade GameStop, you can't trade uh, uh, AMC theaters and so on. All of a sudden, these people who were long could not sell. 
You could not trade, period. You could sell, but you can't buy. There are no buyers, they're all sellers. What happens to the market? It came down, it closed uh, down yesterday. Now, today they reopened it. It's going to go back and forth. It's, it's a technical issue, just like crude oil was down to zero in March, if you remember, when the USO fund was, did not, had too many positions and they had to sell all those positions. Crude oil is, was a zero. People are paying you to take their crude oil and they would pay you to take their oil. That's, something's wrong with that picture. Obviously, crude oil is back to $52 a barrel. Uh, GameStop, which is probably a company that is going to go out, out of business, and it's like the blockbuster of old. They are going to go out of business, but in the meantime, the stock is 200. Somebody has made a lot of money. Now, if we find out with investigations that somebody has started this rumor, they had bought a lot of positions, started this rumor, ran up the stock, and sold. That's called front running. That's the old scheme a pump and dump. It happened in the 1920s. That was 100 years ago, a long time ago. But we have a repeat. But this is a new version of the same thing. It uses social media to suck in people. People go, oh, yeah, this is going up. Let me buy it. Buys, it goes up. And then all these people who started the rumor are the ones who sell. That's usually the case. A couple of weeks from now, we won't hear anything about this. There will be some investigations and nothing much. But that is what happened with this Robin Hood. Again, I just like companies that make a lot of money, like Apple, 111 billion in quarterly sales. That's the kind of company I like. As you know, if you see my holdings, uh, Microsoft and Apple have been our largest holding for years. They've done well. Those are the companies I like, not the ones that might go out of business. Looking at the charts, well, we did have this huge uh, rally in the market, the daily charts. Now we see the fifth wave top right here. We're starting to pull back. A 20-day moving average, we went right through it, and now we're uh, moving towards uh, the 50-day. We came down to the 50-day. Uh, this is the S&P daily technical chart. Yeah, it's supposed to be down to the 50-day right here. So uh, uh, we will see exactly what it looks like. Here it is, uh, uh, the daily chart for the S&P. You can see it came all the way down to the 50-day moving average. It's sitting right there. 37.15 is the 50-day. Close at 37.14. If we do break the 50-day moving average, then we could come down quite a bit more, I think. We could come down all the way to about 3,600. It looks like a fifth wave top. Now we have to go to the weekly charts, which everything moves in five waves. One up, two down, three up. Now we could get the fourth wave to the downside. What happened today on the weekly charts? If you look uh, right here, the market went above last week's high, closed below last week's low. That is called a key weekly reversal to the downside. Short term, it could indicate a top. If we get much below 3,700, 3,694 was the low today. If we get below 3,600, probably go down 3,700. We could go all the way down to 3,600, which would set up a fourth wave pullback. Yeah, I know it's about you know 250 point decline, which is uh, quite a bit, uh, seven or eight percent. But it gets all the froth out. It gets the people who've got over leverage. It gets the people who are trying to day trade and make money. Wipes them all out. They start all over again. But it gives us a great opportunity to pick up some good stocks at some good prices. So we might be starting the fourth wave pullback on the weekly charts for the S&P. We've got to watch 3694 and then 3600. That's what, what I would be looking at for the S&P on the downside. These are my views, these are my opinions. Markets do whatever they want to, whenever they want to. Same thing happened to the NASDAQ. It did get below the 50-day, um, uh, the 20-day moving average, headed towards the 50-day. It looks a little bit better but I will show you the chart that looks the best. Uh, NASDAQ also starting its uh, fourth wave pullback, made a third wave. Now we're starting the fourth wave and you can see these support levels down here where I think we could go down to, again, a weekly key reversal in the NASDAQ also. Went above last week's high, closed below last, last week's low. That usually means that, yeah, we're going to get some more on the downside from a technical perspective. Looking at the daily gold chart, didn't like the close today, closed below the 200 day moving average, just sitting here. I think we need to get uh, the stimulus package done. We get to get more money being printed, more money is printed, could cause inflation. If we do get inflation, gold goes up. But because the stimulus package is sort of limbo right now, the gold market following suit, it is also in limbo. Looking at the emerging markets, those look great. We had the weekly reversal to the upside, uh, to the downside, big down week this week in the emerging markets that what we saw uh, looks like we could be headed uh, to for a fourth wave pullback. 
which is around 49. Not a big pullback, but if we do get a weekly pullback down to, uh, this was wave one, two, three. This was my target on the upside. We hit the target this week. Now we are starting to head back down. A pullback down to the fourth wave will give us, I think, a great place to, to again, position. The best market this week and for the year so far is the Russell Small Cap Index. Again, it's starting to pull back a little bit. Here's uh, the weekly. Uh, we, if we got support, fourth wave down to about 1,900. 10% uh, pullback from the highs, not a big deal uh, if you've got a diversified portfolio. I think, again, small caps, they're the best ones this year. They're up 5% already this year for the year. I think that's the place to be. Small caps, emerging markets, not all of your money, but if you did not have, any, have anything in emerging markets, this is the time to start looking at it. That's my update. Those are my views. Those are my thoughts right now. Again, if you need help with your portfolio, just click on compact.com and get started. We'll be more than happy to help. Have a wonderful week. I'm Mo Ansari. We'll be back with you at the same time next week. Until then, good trading. This presentation contains the current views and opinions of Moise Ansari, Chief Investment Officer of Compaq Asset Management, a registered investment advisor. The views expressed are current only as of the date of this presentation and are subject to change. Nothing in this presentation should be considered investment advice and nothing is personalized to any investor's individual circumstances. Compaq Asset Management offers investment advice only after entering into an investment advisory agreement and gathering client-specific information about goals, objectives, financial status, and risk tolerance. This presentation uses terminology associated with technical analysis and provides charts to illustrate some of the concepts discussed. Technical analysis is a security analysis method with the goal of forecasting the direction of prices of securities or market indices through the study of past market data, primarily price and volume. We make no assurance that past performance or the use of technical analysis will accurately predict future prices. Further, a risk of technical analysis is that overfocus on historical patterns could lead to ignoring or downplaying security-specific concerns, overall market or sector concerns, or other factors because we assume inaccurately that historical patterns will repeat themselves. In no event is past performance a guarantee of future performance.